All right, we got just a couple more speakers that we're gonna, gonna get moving. Y'all ready to march? Yeah. Y'all ready to march? Yeah. Who's street? Our street. 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 Who's street? All right. Yeah. All right, coming up next, I want you to give a lot of love because Oakland is the vanguard of resistance, right? We are the nation's vanguard of resistance, and part of that reason is that we breed organizers. We breed activists. We breed revolutionaries. And so coming up to the stage are two organizers from both Bay Peace and Youth Together. They are the future of our movement. They are our movement. They are why we are fighting. Can y'all come to the stage, please? Y'all give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. I am born and raised in Oakland, California. I'm a high school senior at Alameda High School. <laughs> and I'm here representing the youth who is not able to come up to speak today. All right. So with uh, Inauguration Day coming up, I'm afraid of a lot of things. I'm sure all y'all are afraid of a lot of things. And yet, I'm afraid that we'll regress from the movements that are so close to our hearts but the most important thing that I'm afraid of is that we let that happen. That we stop fighting. That we stop standing up for what we believe in. And that we're not doing this thing continuously, even with the Trump presidency. I'm afraid that people will stop believing in their ability to make change. Because we shouldn't back down for no one. I continue to stand tall because I believe... So we should never let a person of power, let alone anyone, dictate the way we live our lives, the people that we are. And because we are more than people to be put on a political statement. We are more than someone to be put on a political agenda. We are more than our gender, our race, our sexual orientation, our religion, our ethnicity, our nationality. We are deserving people who need to continue fighting for civil rights because the time is now and we need as many people on board as we can more than ever. And Trump's presidency may break apart communities if we only let that happen. So this is a time where we need to come together and unite with one another because unity is peace. Unity is power. And I see my people building each other up, empowering their identities to create liberation for one another. And I know, I just want to put it out there that we can't count on a superhero to win our fights, to make change, you know. We can only count on ourselves. And it's, it's, of all the LGBTQ young women of color who can't be here today. I march for the sound voices of the marginalized lives of our society. I march for all individuals. I march for social justice. And I hope you will too. Thank you. for youth together. Um, today I wrote something really personal so I hope you guys enjoy it. We are here today on what the school system calls a holiday. The same holiday recognized by the government who is at fault for the death of a peaceful man. The same holiday that South Carolina only chose to recognize in 2000, which was only one Adriana ago. The same holiday that white folks get paid for as a day off but turn a blind eye to their privilege. This country believes celebrating MLK Day is less racist, but this hate shows America's true roots and we have not achieved the justice MLK dreamt about. See, in this world, history is altered and our reality distorted. Are black boys losing their lives for carrying a toy gun, for getting Skittles or pulling out their license? Are brown men as gardeners mowing, mowing your grass as during California's drought? Are women as objects forced into mini skirts to be sold on E14? Our kids taught to dream outside their community so that they can say they made it up the hood. I don't want my deal and Primo locked up in a cell that was built for them before they were born. I want them standing in the audience when I am awarded for my high school diploma. However, I am not only worried about my education. 
Donald Trump's appointing for education supports privatization of schools, which means less money invested in public education. How then is my little sister, a low-income Latina, supposed to be educated? She will be denied the resources she needs to read confidently. She will be denied a classroom to share her art in. She will be denied the future that she deserves. How will I become more than your maid, babysitter, troll, or drug dealer if my tools are stripped away? But you see, that's what we're set up for to remain at the bottom dirt poor to cushion this American capitalistic, individualistic lifestyle. This system, these schools, none of it was built for us. Donald Trump, I wish you were smart enough to know that the communities you are attacking are the ones that actually make America great. This is my town, my state, my country. My grandpas worked too damn hard during Operation Wetback. My grandmas worked cried far too long when folks were getting lynched in Texas for it was their kids trying to achieve the American dream. We have struggled too long to put up with another white bigot that doesn't realize we are the sunflower seeds that need to grow tall enough to outgrow this oppression and instead of tearing down our own country we will make it the most fertile land for all our children. So I encourage you to rejoice in MLK's beautiful words. Quote, we must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. I know that this presidency comes as a disappointment and a lot of us are scared, but we must remain united and fight like we always have to create change because we will make MLK's dream a reality as organizers, as allies, and as a community. Thank you. From the mouths of the banjo. From the mouths of babes, y'all. All right, up next we've got Brother Clarence Thomas. 